Would you please state your name? Norman Scott. And where do you live, Norm? I live on 31 Snow Street in Hoosick Falls. All right, would you tell us a little uh, uh, about before you went into the service? You lived in Hoosick Falls. Right. And tell us a little about before you went into the service. Uh, well, I graduated from uh, Hoosick Falls School in 1941. Went to work for M.D. Kincaid and Sons, who at that time was uh, in the plumbing and heating business. Uh, in September of 42, I enlisted in the Marines, went to Paris Island, South Carolina for boot camp. After, that was a period of uh, eight weeks. After that, I went to Norfolk, Virginia to sea school. Uh, after sea school, I was assigned to the USS Bella Wood. It was an aircraft carrier, uh, converted from a, cru a cruiser. All right, and, that, and you went into the, you were a, a Marine assigned to the Navy. A Marine assigned to a Navy ship. I right, see, right. all right. Yeah. And what was your job on the ship? I was a 20 millimeter any aircraft gunner. I see. All right, so tell us then, now that you were in Norfolk, you were assigned to the uh, Bellwood. Right. And then what happened? Uh, on the Bellwood, at first we went for what they call a shakedown cruise to see if there's any bugs being a brand new ship, work them out. And Was that the beginning of uh, converted uh, cruisers into, uh, yeah, that was before the big aircraft carriers we had time to build a lot of them. Right, that was a converted cruiser into an aircraft carrier. Because at that time, they figured they needed a lot more air power out in the Pacific Theater. I see. All right, so you did the shakedown crew, and what happened next? We came back. They worked what little bugs there were out of the ship, being a brand new ship, of course. Then we didn't know exactly where we were going to go. We headed out went through the Panama Canal, and when we hit the Pacific Ocean, then we knew where we were going. We landed in Pearl Harbor, and from there we began our war cruises to the different islands in the Pacific. All right. Could you tell us a little about it, because I know I've read your, the book about mm -hmm. the Bella Wood, and the Bella Wood saw a lot of action. Quite a little, And yeah. uh, would you tell us a little about where you went, and, and what, what, was your, what did the ship do, and so forth? Uh, uh, the ship, we had three types of planes on it. Fighter plane, an SBD, which was a dive bomber, and a TBF, which was a torpedo bomber. We hop-skipped to several islands through the Pacific, trying to soft up the Japanese enemy for future invasions by Marines. <clears throat> All right, so the planes would take off and bomb and, and do their job right. on the islands just mm -hmm. before the, uh, the beachheads and the invasion right. started. Mm -hmm. Kind of soften them up a little bit. I see. And uh, could you tell us a little, like if you, uh, as you went to this island, would the uh, Japanese be sending out planes to go after you oh, and yes. all that stuff? Oh, yes, yeah. They would attack our ships and uh, our planes as well. I see. Yeah. And and the planes went out and did a lot of bombing, a lot of dive bombing, and so forth. A lot so of bombing forth. runs, a lot of strafing runs. And <coughs> how, uh, approximately how many islands did you uh, have to soften up like that? Oh. And, you know, a guesstimate. You, you name them out in the Pacific, and we usually hit them. Uh, we, I came home with nine battle stars. That oh, represented see. nine major engagements. Uh, the last of them was in the... Uh, Philippines, and we had two major engagements with the enemy fleet in the Philippine Sea. So you had nine, nine major things. Nine, it kind of the Philippines would be eleven. Eleven, mm -hmm. I see. So you saw a lot of action. Now, what, uh, can you give us some idea what happened, uh, you know, I think I read your book and I, I read through it, mm -hmm. when, um, when you were being attacked by the suicide planes of uh, Japan. Uh, we were off the Philippines. Uh, one of their planes got through. We had hit it with our anti-aircraft fire, but we weren't able to blow him up. And he came down. Well, hold it, hold it over this way. Yeah, there. Now I got it. He came down, crashed into our uh, flight deck. Uh, there was fire, shrapnel, flying all over, and we were just about crippled at sea. 
at that time. I see. When that plane hit, where were you in relationship to that plane when it hit? I was on my 20 millimeter, probably 45, 50 feet away from the point of impact. Of the point of impact. Right. So you were real close. That, that was real close. Real close. Yeah. Uh, we lost uh, quite a few men from that. Uh, uh, I can't remember the exact amount, but there was a hundred, well over a hundred killed. There was several missing who had either got thrown overboard or dove overboard because a lot of them were on fire and innumerable uh, wounded. I see. Both from shrapnel and from uh, burns. All right, so when that, when that plane hit, uh, how, what happened? How did the men get the fire out and get all that? Uh, what happens on a plane when a suicide uh, bomber, you know, dive bomber hits it? Each unit or individual is assigned a certain station uh, to man hoses, rescue gear, and the like. I see. And, and then you finally got it under control. Finally, uh, we got the main fire out. But of course, there was after fire burning throughout the ship. I see. And then, then what happened? Then we, uh, some destroyers escorted us back to the island of Ulithi, where they made some emergency repairs. And then we came on home to San Francisco. That was the end of it for me. I see, because uh, I read that Bellwood did go back out uh, yes. after that, and yeah. there weren't quite a few engagements after Afterwards. that. Afterwards, yeah, right. But you, what happened to you? Well, that's what we're interested in. I came home on a much-deserved and really appreciative 30-day leave. After that, I was assigned to Marine Headquarters at uh, Washington, D.C. And how long did you, what did you, what was your job in, in Washington? Well, in Washington, D.C., it was mostly guard duty, a period of rest, and we also had uh, honor guard duty at Arlington National Cemetery for military funerals. I see. All right, how long did you stay in Washington? I was there from 19, the early part of 19... 45 until I got discharged in October of 1945, probably six months. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, that pretty well sums up your service. That's so a lot it. of action. You uh, uh, luckily came home in one piece and one you piece, came to San yeah, Francisco. No and then yeah, you Very fortunate. Well, good. So now you're back home. Mm -hmm. And what happened to you while you're back home? Well, I went back to work for my old employer for a while. Uh, then I went on the police force for a period of time, and I wound up with, uh, it was originally Dodge Industries, uh, by Lee Dodge in Music Falls, and it wound up to be Allied Signal. And it's still in operation in Music Falls. And is that where you finished up your work? You retired from that? That's job. where I finished up, right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, you got married and uh, had children. And oh, yes. Yeah. How many children did you have? I had three children with my first wife, uh, who died at the age of 38 years of age. I got remarried, and I have one child by my second marriage. I see. They live in town? Or? Yes, they do. All oh, my children? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. My son, Joe, is a career counselor at Rutgers University in New Jersey. Uh, my daughter-in-law, whom you know, lives in Hoosick Falls and works at the travel agency. And my other two daughters, one is in, a nurse in Bennington, Vermont, and the other works in uh, Cheshire, Massachusetts. Oh, fine. So they're so, all over the place. Yeah, but they're close. But compared oh, yeah. to a lot yeah. of other people, yeah. Yeah. Cheshire is not that far. Close enough to visit. Yeah, that's yeah. great. It's great mm -hmm. to hear. All right, now, mm -hmm. um, do, would you like to say anything uh, that... that we people that haven't been in the, uh, you know, in what in the engagements you have about what you did, uh, you know, about the service or things that you remember, stories, people you met, anything about the service that comes back to your mind as we sit here and talk. Well, I know when I first went to boot camp in Paris Island, the first day I can remember saying to myself, "What have you gotten yourself into?" We were treated as just raw recruits 
We were told, you are not Marines. You have to earn the title of Marines. And we found out why. You're the fourth Marine to tell me that. Oh, yeah? So, it was, it was pretty, yeah. so all right, so it was tough until uh, you got used to it. It was tough, but each day became easier and easier because you fell into a certain routine. I see. And after, after our eight weeks of boot camp, we were given like dress uniforms, passed in review, and then we could call ourselves Marines. I see. <laughs> All right, is there any, uh, any uh, uh, interesting things that happened? You bump into anybody in Washington? or Because uh, there was nobody from Hoosier Falls that served on the Bell of Wood with you. Mm, no, and I don't remember running across anyone yeah. very, on the state side. Yeah, very few people actually did, from, yeah. my, you know, from what we've been doing here. Right, yeah. Because uh, it was a big army, and it was a, oh, yeah. it was a, yeah. a little town. A lot, a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say about Hoosick Falls or about anything else? Um, I was terribly glad to get back to Hoosick yeah. Falls. <laughs> yeah, uh, it must be something to be on a boat. How long were you on that ship, on that boat? Uh, 20 months. Twenty yeah, months. Yeah, just shy of two years. So you were on you were on the sea for twenty months, actually, with that as few port stops. Is that yeah, what happened? Yeah, I or? think we came back to Hawaii twice in the twenty-two that, months. During that twenty months, and the rest yeah. of the time we were right at we were, sea. We were at sea. That I mean, was our we, home. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I was reading that it, it gets pretty monotonous on a ship. Uh, when you're not in battle and you're not getting ready for it, oh, in yeah. between it can yeah. get pretty monotonous. Yeah. But uh, we were kept busy doing house cleaning. Uh, on the flight deck, we'd go up there and march and have our drills and stuff like that. And that was about it. Yeah, uh, as far as the flyers on the uh, boat on the ship, yep. you know, the guys that went out, right. uh, they lost quite a few men in that oh, business, right? A lot of them, a lot of them, yeah. That was one dangerous job, being a, 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 a pilot on, coming off an aircraft carrier. Uh, yeah, when they returned from a raid or a battle, they landed on the flight deck, which to them, from the air, was about the size of a postage stamp. I see. And all across the flight deck, there was cables. And they had what they call a tail hook on their plane. As they came in and hit the flight deck, the tail hook caught in that cable. Sometimes the cable or the hook would bounce. And then we had what we call a crash barrier, several cables. And sometimes they'd even crash through that. We had one lieutenant commander uh, who missed the cables, went right through the crash barrier, over the side, and that was the last we ever seen of him. I see. That was, that was tricky flying. Oh, yes. To, to land on those... Uh, and, uh, Very difficult. And you were, your ship was a lot smaller than the yeah, new aircraft carriers, uh, because it was a converted, converted. one. Converted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Is there anything else you'd like to say that uh, about being in the service that uh, people, young people don't understand that you'd like to, you know, have on tape? Uh, no, except that it's, uh, it's quite an experience. And truthfully, I've got to say that... Uh, it was a good experience, all in all. Bad sometimes, good sometimes, but uh, something that uh, you really appreciated after it was all over. Yeah. How old were you when you were in, in the service? In that I area? was 19. So uh, between 19 and 22, you saw all this action, you right. saw all this mm -hmm. yeah. Young boy. Uh, much younger than I am today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I thank you very much for coming, okay, and we thank you very much.